may know me as Kate the Chemist. I travel across the United States and blow stuff up and try to make science fun and entertaining um, by night. And during the day, I am a professor at the University of Texas, Hook'em Horns, um, where I teach general chemistry from anywhere between like 500 to 1,000 students every single semester. My students actually have their last exam of the semester tomorrow, so I'm like so anxious for them. I've been working hard on their final and their exam. But today, I'm super, super excited to go more into that kid mode and do the fun stuff, the hands-on, the actual like real life experiments. Um, and today what I'm going to do is actually two demonstrations for you. I promised you one, but I'm going to sneak a second one in there because I want to, and I'm in control of this, so I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and so what I want to tell you about is my new book. So my book just came out. It is called The Big Book of Experiments, and it is a book that has 25 different experiments in there that you can do at home safely in your kitchen with your mom, with your grandma with your sister, with your sibling, your cousin, anybody. Um, and when I actually put this experiment book together last May, um, I was thinking about all the students that I interact with on a daily basis. So I do shows in New York, I do them in LA, I do them in Newton, Iowa, Roswell, New Mexico, um, and I just wanted to make sure that no matter where these students live and what their socioeconomic status was, that they would be able to do every single experiment in this book, which is a little serendipitous because now we are all stuck at home home. I don't know about you, but I am going crazy. I am so sick of the rooms in my house. And so I am super excited that I have 25 fun things for you guys to do at home. And you probably already have the majority of these items um, in your pantry or in your craft drawer or just anywhere, maybe under your bed somewhere. Uh, you probably have these items there. So what I'm going to do for you today is the first experiment called snow. And so this may or may not be one that you have the materials at your home already. It depends on if you have a little sibling uh, and if you have diapers in your house. So for this one, you're going to need a diaper. Um, if you don't have one, you can go quickly grab one. Well, not right now, but you can go get one later and do this one at home. So what you need is called sodium poly accurately and so it looks like this it is a really thin white powder it kind of looks like sugar it's super staticky as you can see it is clinging to the side of my cup here um, but you need sodium polyacrylate and you'll use about a gram of it which is about a teaspoon ish so go ahead and rip open a diaper and just gut it and then you're gonna take the powder out of it you're gonna have to mess with the ratios for this one uh, which is what being a scientist is all about is experimenting trying new things um, trying to figure out what the perfect ratios are for things and so if you use it with straight sodium polyacrylate that you can order from anywhere online from like a craft store or anything that has like prime delivery or anything like that you could probably get this very very easily um, if not go to that diaper so if you have the powder itself you're gonna use one gram of the powder sodium polyacrylate to a quarter cup of water which is about two ounces and so what I'm gonna do for you here is I'm gonna take this my sodium polyacrylate and then I'm gonna take my water and I'm gonna add it together. And that's how you make snow. Super simple, super easy. However, we gotta make it fun. So I have all these different food colorings. So I've got yellow, blue, green, and red. And so I'm curious what color we should use. Hmm, I feel like we should have a boat since we're live, don't you think? Let's see here. I'm gonna see if I can open the chat really quickly on your side and see, do I have any colors? Anybody putting in color boats in? Let's see here. I've got blue, I've got yellow, I've got green and red. So if you have a vote, then we'll go ahead and use that. If not, I'm gonna pick my favorite color. So I'll give you a second to use the chat and you can post a color vote. If not, I'm gonna pick mine. Okay, so three, two, and one. Oh, I'm picking, okay, so I'm going blue. I love blue. So I'm gonna take about three drops. One, two, oh, a lot came out, so we'll do three there, perfect. And now what we're going to do is take this heterogeneous mixture, see how you can see the blue and the clear, it's completely separated. Now what we're going to do is swoosh it, that's the technical term, and so we're taking our heterogeneous mixture and making it homogenous. And so now you can see that I have a completely beautiful uh, blue solution and it's blue throughout. Now for the fun part, we're going to add our water to the sodium polyacrylate. And what we're going to see is the powder is slowly going to absorb, look at that! <laughs> and it filled up our entire cup. Isn't that so cool? We started off with some that was right there at the very, very bottom, just this thin layer of sodium polyacrylate, and now I have snow. And so if you don't mind messes, which I don't, obviously, you can stick your finger right in there and move it all around. So this is uh, biodegradable, which is great. So technically you could go outside and throw it at your brother or your sister if mom and dad say it's okay. Okay, you gotta have a parent or guardian say that's okay. Um, but it's soft. 
It's really squishy, which is obviously what you'd want if this polymer is used in a diaper. You wouldn't want something that absorbs water and then is like prickly or harsh or anything like that. It needs to be soft and squishy. But the coolest part is there's no water in here at all. You saw how much water I dumped into this cup, but this powder absorbed all of it. And so what actually happens here is this polymer, like I said, is called sodium polyacrylate. And sodium polyacrylate, I just saw a question come in, sodium polyacrylate. And so that's what the polymer is. And what it does is it absorbs up to 200 times its mass um, all the way up like this. And so it takes all the way, like 200 times its size. Like that's incredible. And so you can see how much water was just, just absorbed here. The way I like to think about this polymer is it's basically like a, a polymer that has a, or a molecule that has a really big jacket on it. And so when it goes by and sees water molecules, so H2O, it reaches out, grabs an H2O and shoves it in its pocket. So it's like, oh, I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. And it puts it in its pocket. But the cool part, the really cool part, is if you were to take this and put it outside is somewhere where I live, like Texas, where it's really hot today, all the water would desorb because the water molecules are just coming out of the pockets, very simply, just take the pockets out. Um, and so this, all the water desorbs and it goes right back to that original polymer. The only difference is now our polymer has been dyed blue. Isn't that cool? So we just make snow. I love this one, it's super fun. The only negative, and it's not really a negative, is it doesn't form good snowballs. So if you're trying to actually have a snow fight, it's not the best one for it, but it does still work pretty well. In fact, my husband's outside, so I'm gonna make a little pile right here, so after this I can go throw it at him. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to do another one. Again, let me actually remind you, that experiment and my other experiment that's in here is in my book called The Big Book of Experiments. There's 25 different experiments that you can do at home safely in your kitchen with materials you probably already have at home. Um, like I said, if you have a diaper, you've already got this. All you need is food coloring and water. And if you don't have food coloring, you can just skip that part. You're still able to see an incredible physical re reaction. But there's another one. I wanted you to be able to do one with me. So I'm going to give you a minute here. And in this minute, you need to go run and get a bunch of supplies. So here you go. First thing you need, a half a cup of water. Okay, so you're going to need a half a cup of water. The second thing you're going to need is a quarter cup of dish soap. So you need water and you need dish soap and you're gonna mix those together in a bowl. So just get water and dish soap. The second thing you're going to need, or I guess we're on third, is you're going to need something like this, like a small plastic bottle, okay? We're gonna do something with it, but just grab a plastic bottle, grab a towel, and then grab a hairband or a rubber band. And that's pretty much everything you need, and I'll talk you through that. In the meantime, I'm gonna give you one minute, like I said, but in the meantime, I'm gonna open up the floor. If you guys have any questions about the demonstration I just did or other experiments that I have in my book, um, I also have a fiction companion book called Dragons vs. Unicorns. It's the first of four books in the series. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to do more if you guys like it. Uh, but this is called Dragons vs. Unicorns, and it's a little 10-year-old version of myself. And what I do is I go out in me, the 10 year old version of myself, I go out into my neighborhood and they use science to solve all these different types of problems. It's basically what I would have been like at 10 years old if I was allowed to play with fire, if I was allowed to play with liquid nitrogen. So it's a super, super fun fiction series. Um, and I, little character, little Kate, basically deals with anything that any typical average. 10 year old fifth grade girl would do with. So girls like, we're hearing boys love it too, which makes me so happy. Um, so it's a super fun read, very, very easy to do with your kids. I also do read along Wednesday, so I'll be posting today's in just a little bit. But every Wednesday, I read two chapters from the book. I'm, I think I'm up to chapter 11 or 12 right now, so we're getting pretty close. We're about halfway through, so it's really exciting. So if you want read alongs, you can see that at my Instagram, which is at Kate the Chemist. Okay, so any questions? Were there any questions? Oh, Kathy, he Thank you so much. Hi, Kathy. Um, Evelyn, how did the powder do that? Great question. How did the powder do that? So what happens is the powder actually reaches out and it grabs the water molecules and it puts it like it's in this in its pockets. So itself, like the molecule itself, if I'm the molecule, I don't change at all. I'm still Kate the chemist, like I'm still the same person, but I'm just picking up water molecules and putting it in my pocket. And so after all the water molecules have been absorbed, what we can see here is a really big fluffy molecule. And so the polymer gets so much bigger. And so if you're able to see the little beads, which I don't know if you can actually see from this angle, is they go from something thin and small, let me see if you can see that, thin and small, tiny to something big and and fluffy. I hope you guys can see that that light's really reflecting, but you can see that. Cool, right? Any other questions? Um, reminders of what you need. You need half a cup of water, quarter cup of dish soap, 
plastic bottle, towel, and a rubber band or like a ponytail holder. Like that's absolutely fine. So you just need a couple items right there. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think what else I could do. I kind of want to do the snow one again. That's so fun. But I want to give you a few seconds for those of you at home. If you have food coloring, you can grab food coloring too to make it more fun. Um, I really like making a fun bubble one, but this is going to be called the bubble snake. So I think we've got another one. Oh, another one. Okay, what is the coolest experiment you've ever seen? Oh, ever seen. That is a good one. So I actually went to a pyrotechnics training out in South Carolina. It was an all-day thing. It was really intense. It was very, very crazy. And at the very end of the day, they showed us what could happen if you load a firework upside down. So instead of putting it in right side up, so this is not a perfect example, but instead of like setting up the firework like this, if you flip it over and set it up like this, they can show you what happens. And it's super, super, super dangerous. Um, so we were pushed really far away, like really, really far away. And we were basically using binoculars to see it and it was this huge explosion and I will never forget the boom like the, the, it just hit me right in the chest it was so loud so scary but I will admit it was the coolest thing I've ever seen I don't ever want to do that ever 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 again I don't ever want to see it again I'm glad I saw it once but that was enough for me like do not do that it was so dangerous <laughs> How do you come up with the ideas for your experiments? Great question. Um, I have been doing these demonstrations across the country for years now. So as soon as I got my PhD and became a professor, I asked the, the University of Texas, hook them horns, I love my job, you guys are amazing, but um, I love the, or I, sorry, I asked the head of the Department of Chemistry if I could do outreach programs and if I could go out to local Austin schools, um, blow stuff up, kind of show how science is just exciting. And over the years, I've started figuring out which experiments kids like, which experiments they do not like, <laughs> which ones they think are super boring, which ones they find interesting. And um, after about, I don't know, maybe a thousand requests from parents saying, what can I do at home? I started compiling a bunch of experiments together and I submitted about 35 or so to my amazing editor, Jill, and she helped me pare it down to the top 25 that would be the coolest. Um, again, we wanted to be super cognizant of the fact that the materials here, we want to make sure you already have in your kitchen or in your craft drawer, like I said. So that kind of helped us. But in general, I know that people like bubbles, they like fire, they like color changes. And so anything that is visual where you can actually see the fundamental principles of chemistry, I think are, are just so fun to do. So that's that's how I personally have come up with these experiments. And obviously, it's, it's kind of like your version of an apple pie. So a lot of these have been out there before. I'm not the person who invented sodium polyacrylate, but what I'm showing you is how I do it, what I think is really fun, my ratios, and what I think the best way of doing these experiments are. <laughs> what is the hardest experiment you have done? Ooh, 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 great question. Well, there's an experiment that I'm afraid of, and so I think that one is the hardest one, um, because you're, like before with the pyrotechnics training that I was telling you about, you have to set something up where you put gas inside of a trapped container. So it would be like if I put gas in here and then sealed it in, now I have all these molecules inside the container shoving against the edges, pushing against the edges until it explodes, and so you're actually making like this mini bomb, and it, it scares me a lot to be perfectly honest my colleagues aren't so scared of it I have some friends that do the one a lot but there's it, there's just something about it that scares me and so when you're scared of it I think you're more likely to make a mistake so in my opinion that's the hardest one that I've ever had to do um, and I stay away from it to be perfectly honest because my heart starts to flutter and I can't keep a straight head and I, you just you have to be so calm and so present when you're doing science experiments even though it does seem like I'm a little like kooky and out there and a little bubbly I'm very focused on what I'm doing so I don't want anybody to get hurt that would be the worst thing in the world great questions guys happy to keep answering more was it difficult to write a book mary white hi mary oh my gosh i know you <laughs> um that is exciting I would say yes and no. Um, I think that the fiction series is a little bit more challenging to write because I'm not a, I don't wanna say I'm not a natural writer. I've learned that I am a writer and I can bring words to life and stories to life, but I would say it's more challenging. It was outside of my comfort zone, so I wasn't um, exactly sure what I was getting into and how I would write it, but it, it was one of the best learning experiences I've ever had. I love the story that I came up with and how, how it ended and I just love it. I will say this one, my experiment book, was not difficult to write at all. I'd 
snap that out in just like a couple days. Then I added more and then more and then more because I just, I had so much fun with that. My husband was a little sick of it by the end because I had done so many experiments in our kitchen and he'd want to make dinner um, and I'd have sand everywhere. <laughs> um, so I would say that was the hardest part about writing this book is making sure that I cleaned up fast enough in time so that we could cook for dinner. <laughs> Great questions, guys. Did you always want to be a scientist when you grew up? Good question. That's such a good question. Um, honestly, yes and no. I think I'm very fortunate because my mom let me experiment with things. She let me explore. I asked a million questions. It drove her crazy, my dad too. Um, but I'm very fortunate that they let me explore. And so I think I've always been looking into how things work, how you can put things together, the engineering aspects of stuff. But for me personally, it wasn't until my sophomore year of high school when I had this incredible teacher, Mrs. Kelly Palsrock, and she would just run around the room and she was so exciting. She was so happy. Everything was just, she was just wonderful. And she made chemistry come alive. And for that entire year, I was just like, tell me more, tell me more. And she was such a great teacher that that passion has honestly stuck with me. I mean, I was 15 in her class and now I'm 33 and I still love chemistry and I owe it all to Mrs. Palsrock. Like, She's just an incredible human, and I'm so grateful for lighting the spark, giving me the chemistry. <laughs> awesome. Okay, if there's one more I can do it, then maybe I'll jump onto the experiment. Let's see if there are any more that came in. Um, if not, I'll just go right into the experiment. I don't hear you. Yeah, I hear experiment. Okay, let's do it. So um, what we have for this one, this is called the bubble snake. So what you're going to do is take this bottle like this. It's a plastic bottle. If you have water in it, soda in it, anything, dump it out. You don't need the liquid inside. I only have these small little ones because these are the ones I use when I breathe fire because uh, you have to use bottled water after you breathe fire. Uh, well, I do in order to make sure it's super safe. Um, but if you have bigger ones, it's totally fine too. So dump out the liquid water. Second thing you're going to do is take the top off, and then you're going to cut the entire bottom piece off of it. So you need the mouthpiece and about two inches of plastic, maybe three. The longer it is, the more difficult this experiment is. So if you can keep it to about two or three inches, that is great. If you can see for my two things, I basically cut off the bottom inch or half an inch or so. So you just need this top portion. Um, I found that you should use asking a parent or an adult to help you if you are a child doing this by yourself. Make sure you give a second here because I don't want you slamming scissors <laughs> into the plastic bottle and hurting yourself. That's not science. Science is all about being careful and meticulous and wearing proper protective gear so you do not hurt yourself by cutting. Okay, so hopefully you've had enough time to cut all the way around the edge here. It doesn't really matter if it's jagged. Don't worry about that. You just want to make sure that bottom piece is open. Okay, so then what you're going to do is you need to grab a towel. Now, a thin towel is best, but you can really do any towel. You could use a sock. I've seen people use paper towels. They disintegrate immediately, but a thin towel works here. So you're going to put it over the edge like this, and then you fold the towel down. Okay, so you're going to fold the towel down over the edge. Then grab your rubber band, your hair band, anything you want. You could glue it if you want. Be creative. That's like I said, that's what a scientist is all about is you're going through, you're experimenting, you're figuring out what you can do with the materials you have in your home right now. Don't go out to the store just to get a rubber band. I'm sure you have something that would work here. Okay, so plastic bottle, towel, and then you're going to put your rubber band around it. Now, this is your apparatus. I'm going to refer to this as your apparatus. You're going to put this down for just a second. Now what you're going to need is a small bowl, a container, anything little. In here, that's where you're going to make your bubble solutions. You're going to put dish soap and water. That's it. The best ratio is two to one. So I like to use a half a cup of water and then a quarter cup of dish soap. So two to one ratio. But basically, you just want to make a soapy water solution. If you want to just grab your soap bottles and bubbles and squirt it in there, that's totally fine, too. Just make sure you give it a little swoosh or a stir because the bubbles are pretty dense. It's a viscous solution, so it tends to sit down to the bottom of that. And we want to make sure the bubbles are right there at the top and ready for us. Okay, so now, if you want to, you can jump straight to making your bubble snake. I like to take a quick detour and add some food coloring. So I use blue before, so I'll use green here. Um, typically when I make my bubble snake, I like to make stripes with my food coloring, kind of like this. I take my time, um, but not that much time because I'm impatient. If my mom's watching this, she could absolutely vouch for that. Um, but I also like to use dark colors whenever I'm on TV so you can actually see it. But here's some green, and now here's some red. I feel like I had a major Texas accident for that. Red. Okay, so then you're going to have your different food coloring on there. Any pattern matters. It doesn't really matter. You just want to cover it if you have it. 
Then the fun part, let me make sure this is on camera. Okay, so you're gonna take your apparatus, you're gonna dip it into the food coloring and then take it out. Hold it for a second. I don't know if you can see, but the food coloring just drained out for like a good two seconds. So you wanna give it a second to drain. Put your mouth on the mouthpiece, take a deep breath. And you make your bubble snake. <laughs> So as you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see the colors really well here, but you can see the stripes there on my bubbles. It's coming after me. But the science is so cool here. What you're actually doing is seeing the molecules that you exhale. All the molecules that come out are trapped inside the bubbles. So you exhale primarily nitrogen. Most people don't think that, but you exhale nitrogen. Then you have oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, um, a little bit of argon, but it all comes out and they're trapped inside of your bubbles. Isn't that cool? If you guys like that, please, please, please check out my big book of experiments. I have 23 other experiments in there that are amazing and awesome. They're a little messy, as you can see, uh, but that's all what a scientist is being, like that's what it's about to be a scientist, right? You're messy, you're exploring, you're checking things out, and you're just trying to have fun. So like I said, there's 25 here. Um, I really appreciate your time, so thank you guys so much. Are there any extra questions? Anything else before I go? Reminder that my Instagram is at Kate the Chemist. Um, you guys should check that out. I do experiments lots of times. I do read alongs of dragons versus unicorns. And guys, thank you so much. Sorry, I have something popped up over there. Yes, so thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys have been so incredible. I hope you're staying safe out there. Wash your hands. Um, quick announcement about COVID in case you didn't know. Um, make sure you scrub your hands. It's not actually the soap that's killing the virus. It's the fact that you're using your nails and you're ripping it apart. So make sure you scrub, scrub, scrub. You've got to use your nails or a scrub brush. 20 seconds, that's what you need, okay? Guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and make sure to check out these books at anywhere books are available like Barnes and Noble.